This is the Fifth Amendment cop card. It's a six step process so that when you get pulled over by the police, even if you're walking or you're a pedestrian or you're the passenger in a car, you don't feel like you're alone. You have a guide. The cops are gonna try to get your identification. They're gonna do anything they can to get you to talk, to give them some kind of information. Cop passed me. I saw him. I think he's gonna mess with me. So I started recording. I'm just gonna, I don't know, maybe I should, no, he's, he's definitely gonna be coming, so. As soon as you see a cop, you wanna start filming. The moment that cop comes around, I start filming that cop. There's no delay as soon as I see him. And then when he comes up, he may tell you that you can't film him. Number one is your First Amendment right to film cops upheld by the 2017 case of Turner versus Driver. Sir, I'm gonna need to see some identification. Um, am I being detained or am I free to go? You're not being detained, but I'd still like to see some ID. The Fifth Amendment cop card and my phone are my superpowers. With these two items, what I'm able to do is fend that cop off. Let me give you, let me give you my, here you go. This is the 5A cop card for a non-driver. I'm not driving and that's the Fifth Amendment cop card. All right, well this isn't your identification. No, what that does is that's a process that I created for people to be able to interact with cops. It's a six step process. So what that does is it makes it so people have a way to interact with cops when you don't have any right to ask me for my ID. Well, I do it all the time. So let's go through this and see if it helps you at all. One, cop sided, start filming and state I invoke 1A. Yes, so I started filming as soon as I saw you and now I invoke my first amendment right to speech and to press. Two, cop approaches and says, any words at all to you? Well, I. Those are words. I invoke the Fifth Amendment. Because if you're talking to me, you're investigating me. Terry versus Ohio says that any evidence you get from me under any circumstances is admissible in court. And all you have to do is say that you were doing a Terry stop. You're very annoying, do you know that? Listen, I invented that card because people are getting drug off to jail. I'm annoying, you drag people off to the dungeon. There's a big difference between the two of us. Well, that's my job. It's not your job. Your job is to uphold my rights. Your job is not to drag people off to the dungeon. You're supposed to stop from doing that. Agree to disagree. Number three, exit and state, I plead the Fifth Amendment. I do not consent to searches or seizures. So number three is if you're the passenger in a car. Often the cop will order the passenger out of the car. In that case, because of the 1997 case of Maryland versus Wilson, if you do order me out of the car and I'm the passenger, I do have to exit the, the car according to the law. So what I have on the card there is exit the vehicle, invoke your Fifth Amendment right, and state out loud, I do not consent to searches or seizures. If you're willing to fight back and you're willing to challenge Terry versus Ohio, which is the basis of Maryland versus Wilson, then you can refuse to get out of the car. But remember, you're gonna get arrested. The 5A cop card says to exit the vehicle and invoke your Fifth Amendment right and tell the cop, I do not agree to any searches or seizures. If you're gonna challenge that, you really gotta be a freedom fighter. You gotta be willing to take that on because I'm telling you now, you're gonna get arrested. All right, Jackass, this is cop believes you're armed and presently dangerous, which I do. How do you prove to me you're not armed and dangerous? Well, I can't prove to you that I'm not armed and dangerous because of Terry versus Ohio. If you're ordering me out of the car as the passenger, an extension of Terry versus Ohio is Maryland versus Wilson. For you to order me out of the car, and I'm the passenger, you have to believe that I'm armed and presently dangerous. Don't worry, I always do. That's what I'm talking about. So, but this is a caveat for people who wanna fight back with their rights. If they're wearing a tank top and a pair of shorts and they're filming everything like I am, and they can prove on camera there's no way a prudent man would believe I'm armed and presently dangerous, you can fight exiting the vehicle. You're probably gonna get arrested, but then you can challenge it all the way up to the Supreme Court. All right, number four, cop demands ID. Well, I would like your ID. Matter of fact, you know what? I demand it. You're in a high crime area. You're someone suspicious. Show me your ID. Well, number four, if you keep reading it, it says the 2004 case of Hibble versus Nevada, which states that if you, I, you have reasonable articulable suspicion, because I'm in an alleyway and you say it's a high crime area and you have some sort of reasonable articulable suspicion, then I have to tell you how I identify. I can't believe Nevada let me down like that. Nevada didn't let you down. Hibble versus Nevada is a huge violation into our Fourth Amendment. What it does is it makes me identify to you how I identify. Well, what if my speech is slurred? That could give you more suspicion to detain me and put me in torture cuffs. The truth is, is that Hibble versus Nevada, 
is actually a violation of my Fourth Amendment right. I should never have to tell you how I identify unless you have probable cause. It is the law. So if the cop says, you have to give me your ID, I have reasonable articulable suspicion, you show them number four on the 5A cop card that says, Hibble versus Nevada says that I have to tell you how I identify. I identify as a good citizen. Five, if you tell me off, use vulgar language, and I say that I'm gonna charge you, which you know what, I will. Cause you got a sassy mouth on you, you know that? Well, you got a sassy face on you, copper. The truth is, is that I can use any words I want. I can say anything I want to you. I can call you a farfig nugan dog catching father mucker. The truth is, is any words I want I can use to you. And this is the Brandeis formula created by Philip Brandeis who was on the Supreme Court. He said that you can use any words in any language ever created. And that is freedom of speech. Sometimes when I interact with cops, specifically and on purpose, I'll use vulgar or foul language towards them because I'm challenging them to see if they're gonna arrest me for free speech. You may have a loved one, a brother, a cousin, a sister, a lover, who's gonna use vulgar, aggressive language toward police and that cop may threaten to arrest him. This is where the 5A cop card comes in handy. Pull out the 5A cop card, show them number five, and tell them that if they arrest your friend or loved one for foul language, that that goes outside of their qualified immunity and that they'll be facing a federal civil rights lawsuit. Six, oh, all right, if I say let me talk or tell you not to interrupt me. Then what I'm gonna say is the 1987 Sorry, case, I was still speaking. You're, I'm, and I'm currently trying to speak. I can hear you. Yeah, so why are you interrupting me? I have every right to interrupt you. 1987, Houston versus Hill. Mr. Hill interrupted police as they were attacking his friend. He was arrested and charged with interrupting police. The holding actually says that I have a right to interrupt you. You don't get to curb my speech just because you don't want to be interrupted. Right, but I want to. I don't care if you want to. You're a jackboot thug pig. Of course you want to. That's the whole point. I don't have to tell you a damn thing, copper. Now, what you don't have the right to do is interrupt the police officer when he's engaged with other people that doesn't have anything to do with you. Then you might get arrested for interfering or obstructing. So when you're involved with the cop or he's involved with someone that you're with, you're allowed to interrupt that cop and he can't tell you, don't interrupt me. And the premise is that if you can't interrupt him, then you don't have speech. There's no such thing as free speech if there's no right to interrupt. Look, I don't even think you know what qualified immunity is, let alone your ability to take mine away. Qualified immunity is set up by the clearly established prong. There's two prongs in the clearly established prong. One, you have to be aware of the right that you're violating. Right now, it's my Fifth Amendment right, and I have to state which right you're violating. Now, you may still have qualified immunity if I don't inform you that I've pled the Fifth Amendment. It's super important that people plead the Fifth Amendment, they invoke their First Amendment right, and now, because you're continuing to question me, this is a police protest. Have a nice day. You don't want to see my ID anymore? I'm all right. The 5A cop card. You should always have the non-driver 5A cop card in your wallet at all times. I invented the 5A cop card so that cops would not be able to get your identification from you. Instead of giving them your ID, give them the 5A cop card. Show it to them, walk it over with them, each one of them step by step by step as you invoke your Fifth Amendment right to remain silent. Use the 5A cop card. I invented it for you. And always film the police. As soon as I see a cop, I start filming that cop. You got it? That's it, I'm out of here. See you guys on the next one. Later, Gators.